Kitson, a freelance digital designer and founder of 11011 Media. And I'm back with my third computer arts tutorial and this time I'm going to be showing you how to get started with data driven documents using D3JS. Um, okay so let's get started, so this is the website for D3JS and it's basically a JavaScript library which helps you bring your data to life and it uses HTML SVG, which is Scalable Vector Graphics, and CSS to do this. Um, so there's huge possibilities with this library, so I suggest you just have a good look through the website, maybe have a look through some of the examples on there, and you can see just what's possible really. I'll let you have a look through these yourself. Um, so I'm going to look at creating something similar to one of these examples, like a pie chart or a donut chart and I'm going to be using some data provided by the Design Council's website and this is a research survey they did in 2010 about freelance designers. So I've downloaded this PDF here and I've also downloaded a few examples here. So I'll just show you what I've got to start with. So this is the first example I found from the D3 website, which is just a nice transition sort of pie chart. And then the second one I've got is a similar donut chart with the data values on the outside, the radius. And then the third example I've got is a pie chart with data labels and the data on the inside of the pie chart. So that was my starting point really to to visualize some of this data in the design console's PDF. And my idea was to create a pie chart based on some of these charts that I provided. So my first one's going to be where are UK freelance designers based? And I'm going to use the data from this PDF and create a donut chart. So let's just close these down. So step two, if you look in your Mark II folder, I'll just open this up here. Whoops. So you'll see here I've started to add in my data variables. So this is going to be my label and this is my value for the chart. So let's just preview this. Here you can see, so I've added a title similar to the PDF, and then you've got my data providing my custom chart. So it's relatively simple to do. And this was created using a mixture. So you've got your div elements with your H1 providing your titles up here. I've got another title, H2 tag. And then my ch chart's going to be created with the JavaScript and it's going to place it on the HTML file. And the great thing about this as well, it's all SVG graphics, so if you zoom in, look, no pixels, great stuff. So it's like using Illustrator in the web really, but just doing it with code. Okay, so you can play around with some of these variables and you'll see it all just changed. So obviously I want to keep them to match the PDF. And the colour scheme for this is provided automatically using using this bit of code here. Um, so step three really is I wanted to customise the colours. So let's open my step three files close that one down for the moment. Okay so here you'll see I've commented out the colour and I've added my own custom variable colour scheme in here. So let's just preview this. Now you can see I've added my colours. You can also see we've got some labels going on. So I'll just skip back to my second example for a second. So here we have the labels on the outside, and I wanted 
the location labels on the outside and the data variables on the inside. So let's just take a look at how I did that. Okay, you'll see some commented out code here as well, which is different positions for the labels, but I wanted the labels facing outwards there, so it's, I've added this variable, which is a rotate variable, and it's basically creating the, the radius around the pie chart, and then this, this bit of code here will create the text, and this is how you add your style attributes to each element. So if you can just see, just change that to bold, refresh there, you'll see the text becomes bold, you could change the colour, so if you see this one's for my inner code, for the inner labels here, so if I just wanted to copy that, I could paste it up here, and change that to white if I wish. I actually should change the text to white here, and if I wanted it bold, and I could change that, just copy that actually. Okay, and I could make it bigger if I wanted 15 pixels. See how that's working now. So I think that's a little bit too big, so let's keep it with 12. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so the next step. I wanted to have another chart with how long freelance designers have been operating for. So here I'm using this data. Let's just open up my version 4. Preview this for you. So now you see we've got the two charts in here, so I'll just talk you through this. So this is my code here for the first chart. So all I've done is duplicated that, pasted it below, and then changed the data set. And this is illustrated here. And again, you could have different colors in here if you wanted to change the color of the chart. You could make it slightly bigger. This is the width element and the height. And also I've got some padding here so my labels don't disappear. Okay, so the important thing here, I wanted to have my charts, if you just look at my HTML code up here, I wanted to attach the chart to the pie element and the second chart to this element so that basically we have like a responsive layout almost. So otherwise it would just be attaching to the, the div. So if we just flip back to here, they were originally attached to the body element, which is here. So this is your variable selecting the body. So this is where your chart's going to be placed. So you can see, if I go back to mark four, on my first chart I've attached it to, here we go, pi the div pi and the second one I've attached it to pi 2 and that's basically attaching my chart to my HTML creating that layout so you can carry on create a load of charts and my plan is really to try and visualize all this data just as a, a way of learning really um, you see there's some nice bar graphs which you can do in D3 as well so I'm just using this as a learning learning experiment really. Of course you can use any data you want. Um, there's loads of open data if you go to the Guardian website. You can download data, data sets and also good resources. Um, information is beautiful and they have a lot of open data and they even have competitions for this kind of thing. So hoping once I've learned the library fully I can submit some of my code into one of their competitions. Um, so there we have two duplicate charts, and then the final step, I wanted to make them interactive. So if we go to my Mark 5 code, you'll see that just under here, in your downloads. Just open this one up in the browser, let's have a look. Okay, so you see, I've still got my duplicate, my two pie charts, my two donut charts, and this one, 
created some nice little hover over effects. And this took me a little while to figure out. Um, but basically I found it out just by going through a lot of the, the example code. And there's also a really good Google group for D3, so I suggest you have a look for that as well. Um, loads of people helping you out there for anything you're stuck on. So for this, I'll show you what I did here, and I'll talk you through how to, to do the same on this pie chart. Okay, so let's go to the bottom here. Okay, so basically, this is the script for creating the arcs on the donut. Okay, so the first thing I needed to do was to create a new variable. So this is setting my radius for the arc. So I've created a new one. So if you see on the, the first example, this one, created a new new class there called arc over. So this is basically going to mean what happens when my mouse rolls over. So let's just create an inner radius. Let's keep this one 80, which is the same as it is now. And then this one's adding 15 to the outer radius. So let's add a little bit more to this one, 20. Okay, so that's what's going to happen when I roll over. And next we need to set the mouse events which are here. So these are attached to each arc. Is this bit which creates your arcs. This creates your fills, okay? So we're just going to delete that, the end tag. Place these in here. And then for this one, you've got your duration, which is your hover over event. So let's make that one a little bit quicker, it's 200 milliseconds, and create a thousand. So when I roll out, this is my mouse out, I should get a new effect. So let's refresh the page. So this is my old effect. You see that one's much, much quicker. However, I've still got the inner radius, why is that? Have a look, inner radius, 80, uh, okay, arc over, let's call this arc over 1 because it's basically conflicting, um, so here's range of my class, arc 1, so you've got to keep, keep your variables name differently for each script otherwise they're going to conflict or not <laughs> um, just arc over one arc over one there we go yep that's it so that one's got arc over just arc over going You see that, and I don't like the this how slow that is. So let's make that four hundred. You see that's got a much more subtle effect on the rollovers. So that's it, really. So if you want to just carry on, feel free to continue visualizing the data in this, like I'm planning on doing. And just see how you go. But some great examples on the D3 website, like I say. There's even like collision detection, so you can make your, your graphics respond to sort of physics and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of fun to be had. Uh, so just go and have a play, really, uh, and see what you can create. Okay, have fun. Uh, see you next time.